on today's show. The Spurs get their championship bling. The Mamba be angry on night number one. And all your stats belong to Anthony Davis. It is Wednesday, October 29th. The Starters starts now. Good evening, sweet world, and welcome to the Starters. Whether you're joining us live online, listening to the podcast, or catching us on NBA TV, we're very, very happy to have you. I'm Jay Skeets, and alongside me, as always, it's Tass Mellis. Welcome to our home. To my right, Starters blog editor, Trey Kirby. hey hey And finally, the international man of mystery, it's Lee Ellis. Gels. Mm. Lay, lay. Mm. Lee, Lee. All right, before we get into it, we first have to applaud and congratulate the San Antonio Spurs on getting their championship rings last night before their game versus the Mavericks. Everyone getting a hug with Commissioner Adam Silver. Look at full embraces all around, except for <laughs> Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> no, just the little handshake. Yeah, I'm good. Not a hugger, Kawhi, and that's fine. He's looking for a contract. And Smiling he though. Doesn't speak much. Got an eye infection. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't want to pass that on. But look at the rings that the uh, Spurs got here. A little detailed look at the uh, the cool rings that they got. The side, I love that, the pounding the rock there, breaking open that rock into the, into the five titles, and then engraved on the ring, good to great. Very, very cool look. And again, congrats to all the Spurs fans and, of course, the Spurs players. But we had some action finally back. The NBA was back last night. And we've got a new segment here for everyone. And we want you to play along as well on Twitter. Use the hashtag, the starters, and chime in. It's called, It's Just One Game. But, all right, we are going to overreact after one night of basketball. Only three basketball games. We're going to make mountains out of molehills. We're going to blow things completely out of proportion again. you got to do the same. It's just one game, but on Twitter, Tass, get us started. Yeah, I'll start us up, and let's stick with the stir Spurs. It's just one game, but the Spurs are winning the title. Okay. That's it. They are the champions. Done. Anoint them the champions. Glad we convinced you. Yeah. <laughs> well, the way they look last night, it, I mean, it looked like they were still playing in June. If they had to play a game six against Miami, it would look like this because it looked like they hadn't missed a beat. Really? Except, yeah, I mean, they were I thought they cool. were super sloppy last night. The turnovers. They so many yeah. threes that it didn't really matter. Somebody hey, tell Byron Scott about that. We're overreacting here, Trey. <laughs> I can say what I want, and it's not incorrect. They did it without Kawhi Leonard. No splitter, no mills, basically a third of their playoff rotation yeah. and still look very, very solid. For a night number one, obviously we're jumping to conclusions here, for a night number one, they look good. I mean, no, they are not the NBA champions <laughs> quite yet, but can you say that they're not going to win 60 games after that performance? Yeah, of course they're going to win. Oh, win yeah. 60 games. Yeah. 60, just it's like always that. 50, so it's going to be close to 60. What about uh, Tony Parker? He's going to hit more threes than <laughs> Steph Curry this year, no, right? Not by What was this. going on with yeah. Tony Parker? <laughs> Especially, especially well, in the preseason, he couldn't hit one at all. I know. He came out this four for four last That's a big night. man yeah. move right there, that footwork. That's beautiful. I mean, that's the Tony Parker we know. But, yeah. but the threes, I mean, this was, I mean, he hit a big one, too. This yeah. was a close yeah. game. This was a great game. Great start to the NBA season. Yes, it was by fantastic. The way. Spurs and Mavs, and of course, we'll get to Anthony Davis. But yeah, very surreal to see Tony Parker hitting that many <laughs> yeah, threes. 25 made threes all of last season. He's like a quarter of the way there already. 25 all of last <laughs> season goes four for four last night. And he had a terrible preseason shooting the basketball and the Spurs also. Very, very cute. The Spurs coming out of preseason. Oh, we don't feel that good. We're not playing that well. And boom, they start the night. Yep. Nah, no big deal. They're 5-0 and on their ring nights. They don't lose after they win the championship. I don't think they're going to win the championship this year. <laughs> just because we got to mix it up. That's uh, but it's segment, a, No, no, I, they're not going to win. Well, I, just, I decided. And how about uh, Charles Barkley on Inside the NBA, of course, saying they're too old. Yeah. <laughs> this is the year they're finally too old. And Kenny, of course, making fun of them. You've been saying that for the last five or six years. Well, I want to keep I'm, predicting it. Some... It's got to be right sometime. <laughs> Eventually, Eventually yeah. yeah. When they retire. Yeah, when they're exactly. done. Oh, these yeah, guys are officially too old. Yeah, they, look, they look great. But what about you, Lee? It's just one game, but... It's just one game, but Chandler Parsons is the worst <laughs> signing this offseason. Oh. He, he had a pretty bad game last yeah. night. It started off all right for him. He had a really nice dunk early on, but that was pretty much the only basket he scored of his first sort of seven or eight attempts. I mean, he goes in here, takes it right at Tim Duncan, and you thought maybe this is exactly what Dallas were hoping to get when they signed him in the offseason. But then the ball just wouldn't drop for him. It wasn't taking bad shots necessarily. It's just the balls, were, the shots were rimming out. So, look, he's going to improve. Dallas, it was a one-point game. Yep. You know, we're, we're not going to get too carried away here, but Chandler yeah. passes. I mean, he's paying, he's getting paid the big bucks now. He is going to be expected to deliver some big performances. Only, only four times during the entire three seasons with the Rockets did Parsons <laughs> make two or less field goal attempts when he had ten of them, when he mm -hmm. put up ten of them. Yeah, that was, it, that was a. a 
t- terrible start yeah, for Parsons but, but for a forty six million dollar if, contract. If you got the Mavericks and you didn't get that out of him last night, no production, and you were still within that close to the San Antonio Spurs, you've got to take that as a positive, oh, yeah. thinking that when he does find his rhythm, it's really going to help Monte and Dirk. And there's a definite learning curve for Parsons too, because he's coming from the Rockets that kind of just played pick and roll and freelanced everything, and the Mavs have a bit of a system, and he's going to learn where to be and where he's going to get his mm-hmm. shots. It'll get better. Hey. Put your common sense aside, all right? I mean, We're I hate this guy. What a terrible here. sign. We're overreacting to everything. Uh, and I, I hated what happened at the end of the game because Chandler obviously didn't have it going, and Dirk did. He just hit two silky jumpers, and then with the game on the line, he passed up that opportunity. He's got Danny Green on him. He hit two shots just previous to that. There's no double coming. You've got Danny Green, a shooting guard on you, and you decide to pass out. It makes no sense to me. It comes out to Chandler Parsons, who's way behind the line. Yeah, super deep. He's way you're deep. You're yeah. right. And Ellis Get to is the open line, too. my man. Parsons but, even talked about he yeah. probably could have swung it to Ellis there because there was a little bit of time left. There was a little bit of time left, and it only gets worse for Chandler Parsons. He had to buy Dirk dinner after the game. As we know, he signed that <laughs> monstrous contract this offseason, but it's only because Dirk took less money. So Dirk said, told ESPN Dallas, I told him every dinner on the road this year is on him because it's my money anyway. Oh, That's true. Yeah. That's 100% That's good. true. That's good. We've got to take a break right now, but we'll continue to overreact <laughs> after one night, including Anthony Davis, who is the winner of the next 10 MVPs. Most likely. Probably. You're watching the starters. Come on back. Welcome back to the starters. We are continuing a segment where we overreact to everything we saw on night one. So let's keep it going here. It was just one game, but Anthony Davis is going to win the MVP this season. Maybe not an overreaction. Is it that far fetched? (laughs) Come on. I mean, yes, he looks spectacular. He's also playing against the Orlando Magic. (laughs) Great point. Maybe they play the Magic for all 82 games. Uh, I mean, if he does, yeah, he could win it. But last night, it's time to bow to the brow. I mean, that was fantastic. I mean, if you looked up, and you didn't know who Anthony Davis was at, at you know, different times during the game, you'd think, well, oh, is this guy a wing? I mean, he's coming off oh, pin yeah. downs, shooting jumpers. Now he's leading the break. Now he's blocking nine shots. Oh, man. The numbers are ridiculous. 26 break, points, man. 17 boards, two assists, three steals. And again, those nine swats, unfortunately, he didn't get the triple-double with the 10 blocks. Very unfortunate. He's acting more and more MVP-like, too. He was getting hacked all the time. He was complaining to the refs. He was fired up. He just looked like a superstar. We talked on our fantasy show. We compared Anthony Davis to Hakeem Olajuwon Ooh, yeah. in terms of stats. Yes, right, okay. And you <laughs> saw that line there last night. Yeah. Only one of the one other player since you know 85 has matched those points and rebounds and blocks and steals, mm-hmm. and it was Akeem. Mm-hmm. That's the only other guy well, to do put the, those type of lines since 85, 86. The of thing is, they're tracking it. the thing is, obviously, it's far too early to compare him to Hakeem, but he has got those same sort of instincts about how to go after shots, when to block them, and that's the sort of skill that you can't necessarily teach. He just knows when to jump. He knows how to time it right. Yeah, defensively, he, he's a lot closer that's to right. Akeem. That, that's than, right. Of yeah, I mean, the his offensive game still needs work. But for the New Orleans Pelicans, if they are going to take a step up, they need to make sure they're crushing these sort of teams. And no disrespect yeah, to you're Orlando. Right. You're right. Orlando's a team that's in the rebuilding process. But they need to go out and make sure they hammer these teams because if you fall to these teams or they come too close, then that just shows that team's not quite ready. But what we saw last night from the New Orleans Pelicans, very impressive going forward that they might be ready to take that next step. Not to take away from AD's shine, but the Orlando Magic missing two of their better players, yeah, yeah. Victor Oladipo and Channing Fry, who at power four would be drawing Anthony Davis way out. True. Uh, and those nine blocks wouldn't have been there if he was guarding I, way I, out. I mean, the guy can do whatever he wants yeah. on the basketball floor, and we are right to anoint him the next superstar <laughs> like everybody oh, man, else. Yeah, That's totally sure. fine. That's totally fine. But MVP, nah. Well, you if, you look, if you look back, Back at the last 15 MVP winners, you have to be one of the best teams in the league. Yep. I think the lowest is like the fourth sort of fourth best team, you know, to sure. win it on that team, to be yeah. MVP. Mm-hmm. And usually it's a top one or two teams yes. over the last 15 years. So he could win MVP if the Pelicans win, you know, 50 plus games. That's yeah, what exactly. we said yeah. before the season yeah. started. That's in the West is going to yeah. be tough. But That's man, right. if this team stays healthy, yeah. and what we saw, you know, last night with Davis and Ashik up yeah. there grabbing every offensive rebound imaginable mm-hmm. and being a bit of a defensive force, the two of them, I mean, they could get close to yeah. that 50 win mark again if everyone plays. There's a ton of talent. They're a pretty thin team, but if those top six guys they oh. have that are all paid pretty well perform this year and stay healthy, they're going to be a good team. You just, you just hope, though, that he's not covering up Anthony Davis for other mistakes. They shot badly last night. Mm-hmm. You know, he's 40% from the floor, 4 of 17 from downtown, and only 48% from the free throw line in still a comfortable win. But obviously, you know, when Anthony Davis has a line like that, it does cover up 
some of those other sure. deficiencies. Is New Orleans going to ask to move back to the East? Because in the East, <laughs> in the East they're slipping it, in. They'd be yeah, in there. You're true. right. You'd have true. a better chance of getting the MVP. All right. Well, it's just one game, but the Lakers are going to go 0-82. <laughs> I mean, how many I think my, I believe this more than the AD was. <laughs> the Lakers going 0-82. I mean, a, a rough game for the Lakers, uh, not only in the loss column, but, of course, the injury to Julius Randle. But... You you start well. You look at the you know the the upcoming schedule. Of course, the start of this season to the Lakers. You know even like their first 15 games. It's possible this team it will be like two and 13, three and yep. 12. And it's no, not that far fetched, right? Oh no, a friend Blindberry wrote about this on NBA.com. You honestly look at the sked and uh, they're going two and 14 or three and 13 by the end of November. I don't see any way around it. And yeah, uh, exactly. you know I feel bad for Mike D'Antoni last year because he, he got to 27 and 55. Uh, I think Mike D'Antoni did an incredible job, <laughs> even though... You think that's an overachievement? Yeah, I think it is. I don't think they get the 27 wins, despite having Kobe Bryant on their roster this season. Obviously, he wasn't there last year. And again, okay, the loss, you know, whatever. Who really cares? Graham Steeman thinks. The terrible news out of Lakers camp there yesterday was Julius Randle going down with a very strange injury there in the fourth quarter. In his debut, of course, the number seven pick in the draft. It looked and like he just rolled it. It was yeah. so weird. Exactly. Everyone at first, you know, oh, okay, he sprained his ankle. Mm -hmm. He'll bounce back. He's a young kid. But, you know, TNT at first saying it was a broken leg. And then the Lakers oh, releasing a statement know. that the team doctors at the arena said a fractured tibia. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're now hearing from the LA Times that Julius Randle is out for the season. It, which yeah. is, I mean, what a blow. Yeah, Again, his first tough. NBA yeah. game, he looked like, he, we saw him, of course, in, in Summer League. He's got handles. Yeah. He's like he a Lakers fan. I know, and then, and then this happens. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, we're looking for where the improvement's going to come from, and you think a young guy like him maybe is the, is the one guy who could do something for them, but obviously that's not going to happen now. But, yeah, for the, for the Lakers, I mean, if you're, if you're playing the Lakers this year, I would just say let Kobe Bryant shoot as many times as he wants. I agree. Uh, because, honestly, that's, that was their strategy last night, just come down and shoot the ball. Oh. And there was but hold no on. Ball Offensively, I mean, that's not, not really, really going to be the Lakers' yeah. problem. Well, they are just going to yeah. stop no one. Well, that's they right. They're going to struggle. They've got to not stop much anyone. inside. Ed Davis looked okay at times there last night, but again, he's not really a big guy who's going to be able to stop guys in the post. He's a good guy coming over as a help defender. The perimeter defender. Yeah, it's but uh, it's it's not looking good there for well, the Lakers. Well, sticking with the Lakers. Oh, 82. Well, sticking with the Lakers. It's just one game, but Kobe Bryant is going to snap, <laughs> right? I mean. <laughs> He got into yeah. it with Dwight Howard last night. I'm worried. I'm legit worried about this. Yeah. If he's snapping in a 25-point <laughs> loss, I mean, it, was, it ended up being a 19-point loss, but this yeah, is but a 25-point game at this point. And he gets into Dwight Howard on the offensive end after a defensive board, maybe just because he wants to get into it with Dwight. Oh, yeah. Which, which yeah, he just, he just wanted a little payback. It was right nice in. to see this beef pay off immediately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah, first game of the year. Kobe saying, try me a couple times yeah. and calling Howard soft. Uh, yeah, I'm taking Kobe if they throw down. <laughs> uh, probably. <laughs> okay, I, I, Dwight's not that sort of guy who you think is just going to go and get into it and snap himself. No, but I am worried about Kobe. Uh, there, it's, it's got a falling down feel to it. I don't know if you remember the Michael yeah. Douglas movie there where he just snaps. <laughs> Kobe's going to snap, and it may not even be the other team. It could be his own Very players, likely. his coach. It's one game Boozer. and he's already snapped. It's yeah. one game and Kobe's already angry. If he yeah. starts carrying a briefcase, we're in trouble. All right, Trey, <laughs> what, what else do you have for us? It's overreaction. It's just one game, but the NBA's hair game is on point. We're talking about maybe the best hair season in NBA history. Okay. We have wow. to go back to the 1970s, the days of the gigantic afros. We only saw six teams, too, last night. We only saw six teams, but we saw some incredible haircuts. Eric Gordon and Drew Holiday, both with the Mohawk. Alfred Payton's hair, whatever you want to call it. Evan Fournier, terrific oh. top man bun wow. falling <laughs> like out. That. Jeremy Lin's been rocking the shaved-in steps on the side. And my man Boris Diaw looking grayer than Tass Mellis oh. out there. Oh. Oh. It's Ouch. great. And the best hair in the backcourt has to be the Orlando Magic. They're both rocking the Trey yeah. Kirby. I love these guys. Okay, you're right. <laughs> they have both your haircuts. Okay. Wow. They didn't look that great on me. Best either. NBA hair <laughs> of all time, though. That's a big call. I mean, yeah. if we're overreacting, yeah. why not? What do you think about that low blow? Got some gray hair coming in there? I think, I think Boris Dio is actually, it's, it's on the surface because it's pretty curly. Surface grace. So it's all sort of staying on top. Yeah. I think he's about 3% gray. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. I think it was more than that. Okay. And I don't think we're exaggerating with this last topic. It's only one game, but this is going to be the weirdest, most awkward video you've seen. During the Pelicans game, there was a cooking, cooking video promoting a restaurant called Born that involved the Pelicans cooking. I'm not sure what they were doing, <laughs> and awkward. they showed it twice, and here's a clip of it. 
You know, putting together great meals a lot like basketball it takes a lot of preparation and a ton of teamwork. So I want to introduce you to some of our chefs back in the kitchen. I think you'll be impressed. We put lots of hard work and training in to get ready for tonight. We want everything perfect and no turnovers. Man, why now? It never happens in practice. No, you don't dip. You dunk like this. Look, chefs, no one in here is the star. That's right. A scoop of this, a shot of that. And a dabble of sauce. We're delighted you're pleased, but your chefs have a bit more work to do. Ooh, I thought you guys looked yeah. familiar. Acting is hard. Yeah, that was worse acting than Lee Ellis. <laughs> oh, Dabble of sauce. That was rough. Right, coming up next, we'll get you ready for tonight's busy NBA schedule, including the Russell Westbrook Unleashed Party. Don't go anywhere. You're watching the starters. Welcome back to the starters. 12 games on this evening. That's the Wednesday night we know and love in the NBA season. There's an NBA League Pass free trial. I highly recommend you try it out. Bucks, Hornets, 76ers, Pacers, Nets, Celtics, Wizards, Heat, Hawks, Raptors, Wolves, Grizzlies, and it continues. Bulls, Knicks on ESPN, Pistons, Nuggets, Rockets, Jazz, Lakers, Suns, Warriors, Kings, and the Thunders and Blazers is the later game there on ESPN. I want to know from all you guys here at the desk and everyone watching, of course, jump in on Twitter, hashtag the starters. Which game of those 12 are you most excited for tonight? I am not going to be able to take my eyes off the Russell Westbrook project. I mean, Russell Westbrook leading his team without Kevin Durant, with also a bunch of injuries in addition to Kevin Durant, is going to be spectacular. We're all expecting the Russell Westbrook show. You Russell haters, turn away because that's exactly what we're going to get. Now, he knows he can get a shot anytime, so he's going to get his guys involved to give the supporting cast the confidence they need to make their playoff run, but no Reggie Jackson's on top of no KD. The man is going to shoot a lot, and it's going to be fun to watch, especially going up against third-year guard Damian Lillard. It's weird to say third-year guard Damian Lillard. It feels like he's been around for a long time. It's I want true. to see what he's added to his game. A great point guard matchup right there. That's a good one. Thunder Blazers, what about you, Trey? My pick is pretty obvious. I'm excited about the Bucks traveling to Charlotte for a game 12 years in the making because the Hornets are back! Yes, back. they are! And I am excited because I've been planning my outfit for the night for the past <laughs> summer. I got this hat literally from my mom's basement from the first era of the Hornets. Pretty great condition, actually. Nice. Really nice. Picked up this uh, shirt across the street, Ragarama, oh, a vintage cool. Thor. This is 20 years old. Still looks great. The teal looks good on everybody. So they hooked us up with some jerseys. Yep. We got matching shoes. <laughs> wow. It's going to be a great night. A buzz is in the air. And, mm -hmm. I mean, because you're apparently the Hornets' number one fan all of a sudden. Go <laughs> no Hornets! Uh, Kemba Walker reportedly agreeing to a four-year, $48 million uh, extension, yep. excuse me, uh, which I have no problems no, with. Good deal. I mean, it makes sense, especially when that rising salary cap yep. sort of kicks in in the future years here. $12 million annually. That's going to put him around the top 10 paid point guards. Yep. But the guy's only 24. He's improved every yep. year in the league. And this is a, a team sort of hopefully on the rise mm -hmm. there with Lance coming in there and building off of last year's success. So congrats to Kemba on that. Lee? A bit to me like a Kirk Heinrich sort of contract where he's the face of the franchise. He's a nice guy. Pay him. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. People love him. Which game are you most uh, excited for tonight, Lee? Minnesota Timberwolves going to Memphis to take on the Grizzlies. The Andrew Wiggins and Zach Levine show starts tonight. I don't think the Minnesota Timberwolves are going to win many games this year, but they're going to be must-watch TV just to see these two guys in action. Running the break with Rubio. Absolutely, and they're pretty much going up against two guys at the opposite end of the athleticism spectra tonight in Zach Randolph and Marc Gasol, but that doesn't really matter. I just want to see these, these, these guys go down, just throwing alley-oops to each other, dunking, having all the highlight reel plays. And you don't know how many games you're right that the Wolves will win this season, yeah. so you sort of want to start watching them now. Before, yeah. Because as it goes <laughs> on, and yeah, maybe they're not in the playoff race, you yeah. sort of start you know, going to the games that sort of matter in the win-loss column. I like that pick. I'm going with the Bulls and the Knicks for a number of reasons. Like, first off, it's in MSG. Mm -hmm. You're always going to love a good buzz there when the Knicks are... Zero and zero, too. You know, they haven't lost a First game place. yet, so you know the crowd's going to be hyped about that. But, you, of course, you have Derrick Rose. Mm -hmm. Knock on wood, on fiberglass, whatever this desk is made of, hopefully <laughs> the guy stays healthy. I'm excited to see Pau Gasol in there with the Bulls as I'm well. With you. Uh, you know, another offensive guy to help out Derrick Rose. And then on the Knicks side, you know, we're going to start seeing if this yep. triangle offense... <laughs> 
can work. Yeah, yeah. You know, it doesn't with these work perfectly pieces. after tonight's game. No, no it's gonna it's gonna take a while to get <laughs> yeah. this thing humming along. There but I am back. excited. No, yeah. I, if we're going Bulls to Knicks. jump to conclusions on tomorrow's show as well, we're gonna be jumping to conclusions that the Bulls offense is great. It's amazing. It's only because they're playing the Knicks <laughs> defense. Okay, easy. All right. Well, time for a new segment here on the show. It's time for the starters fantasy minute. And I'm told we even have a new graphic and everything. Unleash the unicorn! There she be. <laughs> there it is. Fantasy oh. Minute. Tess, what are we looking at tonight in terms of fantasy? Stephen Funaki Adams is the new starting center of the Oklahoma City Thunder. Years of Kendrick Perkins starting at that spot appear to be a thing of the past. Scotty Brooks has finally made the decision to put this guy in the lineup. He's had a great preseason. I know it's just preseason, but the man is talented. I mean, he's yeah. got offensive skill to go along with some defensive skill and mobility. He can block shots. He's a presence on that end. And he is going to be a partner with Russell Westbrook because yeah. Westbrook needs a guy to pass to. This guy is being picked up all over Yahoo Leagues. He's 24% owned right now. He's a guy to pick up. This yeah. might be a problem where he's going to be fouling a lot of guys. I was going to say, who's he going to irritate tonight? Yeah, I said Thomas Robinson in the previous Right, show, right. So, but, but I thought he was coming off the bench, Stephen Adams, so it might change it now that he's starting. He's got to change, he's gotta change his mentality <laughs> coming off the bench, not or you know from going yeah. from the bench to be a starter. You just can't foul the same way. I know you mentioned preseason, and we kind of always dismiss preseason. But for a guy like him, it did mean a little bit of something this year because he was out there trying to mm -hmm. earn a spot, and he's obviously done enough to impress the coach. I know Kendrick Perkins, you know, probably was going to look towards going to the bench anyway there. But I think those numbers for Stephen Adams are something that you can actually look at and say, we could expect these sort of numbers from him throughout the season. Again, let's hear what uh, people think. What game you're most excited about? Tell us about your fantasy teams. If you've got questions, send them in. The starters at NBA.com. Want to see a nine-year-old Skeets, by the way? <laughs> there you go. Looks cool on you, man. <laughs> Pretty cool look. There we are. <laughs> Fits me like a hat. All right, we've got to take a break. When we return, <laughs> the Spurs coming back and playing basketball means one thing and one thing only. It's the return of Lee Ellis's very solid play of the night. The Get those thumbs ready, Lee. <laughs> Welcome back to the starters. The NBA season is back. They are playing basketball once again, which means it's time for Lee Ellis's very solid play of the night. And yep. I wonder who gets it. <laughs> San Antonio Spurs, it came in the first quarter of the first game of the season last night. And check this out, Tony Parker with a miss. 72-year-old Tim Duncan saves the ball. Nice. Throws it out, Bobo. But Marco Bellinelli over to Manu, Tony Parker in the corner for a three. Everyone touches it. You just wanted to name all the sports. Well, I do, but that's what I that's what I like about it. When it's teamwork and everyone gets involved, and that's what I call a very solid play. Very, very nice. That yeah. was a very solid. solid. Yeah, that was. That Not was. Flashy. Can't deny. Not flashy. You know, once we're three weeks into this, it won't make any sense. He'll be showing dunks, but whatever. All right, guys. Tomorrow, the Starters Daily Show, 6 p.m. Eastern on NBA TV, and Friday, the drop podcast hour long so you want to join us then subscribe on itunes thanks for joining us folks and remember menial tasks require minimum brain power but maximum brain focus brace the night people what a boring quote that was